Okay, the recording is in progress, and uh, uh, we're going out, I believe, on Zoom. Yeah, we're uh, we're live on uh, on uh, what do you call it? Facebook? So there we go with our with our uh, zooming. And uh, let me see here. How do we get this to diminish itself? Well, I have no idea. What I will do is I can go over here. Yeah, and I can go. Uh, oh, I don't know. How do I get rid of this? Uh, oh, here we go. I think I don't want to maximize. I want to minimize. There we go. Okay. A few things I have to do here, uh, which is a pain in the ass. So, but I got it done. And we'll admit all. Okay. We'll take that chance that the all the people here are decent people to see. Oh, hey, there's Mandy. Uh, she always brightens up the proceedings. Edward Berger, his That's voice right. is uh, not to be believed. Uh, Jeff Stein, hello, Jeff. You got to turn on your mic if you want to talk. Uh, uh, just uh, turn on the mic. You see? Hello. <laughs> when to turn on? There you go. And uh, Lynn Lafrisco, your mic is off, but I think it's because you want to. Um, yeah. I, I, it's because you want to, uh, uh, you're doing something else. Okay. There's Charlie <laughs> Wallace. Uh, and uh, Charlene, are you there? We don't have any audio on her. We don't have any video on her. Uh, but uh, if we don't get it soon, we'll just tell her to get lost. Uh, I think we will tell her to get lost. Okay. Where do we do? Oh, wait a minute. Put her in the uh, waiting room. That's what we'll do. We'll put her in the waiting room until she can figure out how to make this thing work. Oh, here comes uh, Marjorie the Miller. Okay. Well-known wife of a radio personality who's out of work. And uh, that's the beginning of our group. Uh, I, got, I got a note today from, oh, here's Andrew. Here's Andrew. Okay. And uh, where's Shecky? Shecky's not here today. Uh, and he should be here today, but he isn't. Uh, wow. Why is it? Let me call him and see why he isn't on. <laughs> Let me go check. Uh, because he didn't go to he didn't go to Europe. So you know. oh, he didn't. Uh, huh? No, he didn't. Uh, let me see here. Um, uh, 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 call and uh, Shecky and Tim uh, Shecky Shecky Shecky. Okay, let me call him at home and see why why he's not here. Uh, uh, okay, it says, please leave a message. Hello, Rick. It's Alex. Are you there? I guess you're not. We wondered where you are for the show today. Oh, well, you didn't go to Europe. I know that. But we're calling you while the show is on, trying to find out where you are. <laughs> you. Anyway, I hope you're okay. Bye. Okay. I guess uh, we don't know. I have no idea where he is or isn't. Um, but I got a fast, I got, you know what, you, you know, there's something that they're not answering for one reason or another, because if you call and on the first ring, you get an answer, you know, that other people have called and left messages, or at least one other person has called. So I have no idea where he is, but, uh, I assume unless, well, I called him yesterday and he wasn't home either. So. But what happened was he didn't go to Europe. He decided at the last minute not to go. Now, maybe it's the last minute he did decide to go. I don't know. I talked to him while he was saying, well, I've got 10 more minutes to make the plane, but I'm not going to do it. You know, and uh, then he may have decided to do it. I don't know. You know, so we'll, uh, we'll, 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 find out. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Maybe he'll try. Maybe if he is in Europe, he'll try to get in right now, but. And then we haven't heard from um, uh, uh, from uh, uh, Steve Bender because there was some. I, I'm, I don't want to reveal too much of it because I don't know what went on, but he had some kind of family emergency uh, involving his daughter, and uh, he just did, he wrote me and said everything's better now, but I don't know if I'm ready to talk on the show because I'd be a bummer. So. Hmm. 
uh, 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 he's not here for that reason. So, uh, but we, I don't know where could Shecky possibly be. That's, uh, that's kind of interesting. Anyway. Hello, everybody. Hello, Mandy. Hi. Hello. Hello, uh, uh, mm. Edward Berger. That's right. That's right. That's right. Jeffrey Stein. Len Hello, Frisco. <laughs> Len's doing something else there. I don't know what. Looks like he's working. It looks like he's yeah. working. He's very intent with something. Yeah. It's almost like he can't figure out why he's not doing something. Maybe he's trying to get on here and he can't. I don't know. But he's here. He's got his mute on. Uh, can you hear us, Len? No, he has his mute on. You know, if he has his mute on, he can still hear us. You know, that's just, you just mute it so that people don't hear all the noise in the room and things like that. Mm-hmm. Hello, Charlie. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Let's see around. that t-shirt full form here. Yeah. There, there he is. That's, uh, that's Albert uh, Einstein. That's our boy. Guy. Al mm-hmm. Einstein. Yeah. My, my uh, Uncle Al. Albert Einstein, or as we, we know Albert Einstein, uh, is uh, Albert Brooks. Right. So, uh, and my cousin is Albert Stein. Albert Stein, yeah. But uh, uh, Albert Brooks' real name is Albert Einstein. He was Bob right. Einstein's son, and his brother was, uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Bob Einstein. Bob Einstein. So I knew that, but I never connected the two together. <laughs> Albert Einstein. Is he the yeah. one that just died? Yeah. yeah. He's the one that died. Yeah. Yeah. No, Albert Brooks didn't die. It was. Yeah. Uh, no, no, his brother. No. His yeah. brother. Yeah. yeah. And my great grandmother was Jane Einstein. Was Jane Einstein? Yeah. Wow. Cool. Cool. How you doing, Andrew? I'm doing swimmingly well. Swimmingly well. And, and Marjorie Miller, how have you been? I'm I haven't talked fine. to you in a while. I haven't talked to you in a while. I'm doing fine. Yeah. Today, uh, what, what do we have come to the house? This is this is I can't stand to watch this window washers, window washers. Oh, yeah. And we're on the eighth floor. That's right. And they get out on the ledge with their but just a harness, well, a harness that hooks onto these hooks that are in the side of the windows on every floor. Now, I don't know. If, is it that way on every building? I don't know that every building has those hooks. Usually but they the have them here, and you go. He goes out on the ledge and hooks himself in, and then he moves over to the next window by unhooking and walking over. And re- it's, it's. I don't want to watch it. Okay. In the newer buildings, they have those wind, those building things that slide down. Yeah, that's what. I, yeah. The, the, they yeah. have the. Oh, you mean they they turn over? But the scaffoldings no, no. that go in up the, and down in on the buildings. They have oh. like a long plank held together by rope, and they go. Oh, oh, that's in business office yeah. office in a, apartments too. Well, I would imagine the big thin pencil buildings that they've been building here. I don't know how they're doing that. Yeah, yeah. It could be automated by me. Hmm. I said it could be automated by now. Well, it, automated in this building. We're lucky the <laughs> ele- we're lucky the elevator building. <laughs> He means a new building's out. A new building. Okay, but, but it's like Relatively. you know, I, I don't know that the uh, 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 the what do you call it works. The, the elevators are, are barely working, you know. So anyway, I uh, have a friend. You do you his, really? I do too. And his son, yeah, worked at uh, the big university here in Connecticut, and he was on the third floor, and the floor turned off and ran vertically down at full speed. Oh my God. Really? I don't, I didn't know they could do that. I thought there was some kind of, uh, it it didn't happen for him. Well, I mean, yeah. And he's still going to the hospital to the doctor and physical. Wow. But he survived. How many floors? Three or four. Wow. Oh, well, that's not bad. I mean, suppose you're on the eighth floor. That's still yeah. high. Yeah. I, I thought they, they had some kind of, all of them had some kind of safety device that if suddenly the thing started to drop, it would. Yeah, me too. Yeah. The hook would go on, right? Yeah, some kind of. Yes. Because I, 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 I think that while you do see a cable that pulls it up, 
It's also attached to the side of the wall. And but, I, you know, I often wondered if, if, for instance, let's say you're on the eighth floor of a building. All right. And all of a sudden that elevator decides to drop all eight floors. If at the last moment, just before you hit bottom, you jump up. Are you okay? No. Here, now, this is the time that we go over to Charlie Wallace, who's a well-known PhD, who's going to tell us why jumping up won't help. Jumping up won't help because you, first of all, you can't jump up as fast as you're falling down. So all you're going to do is reduce your speed a little bit, and it's not going to be enough to save you. So if I really learned how to jump high fast, would that help me? No. no, because the act of jumping would break your legs. <laughs> oh. If you did that, if you jumped that fast. So what do I do? Just and that high and that high. You bend over. Say goodbye. Just, yeah. yeah say goodbye. Just your ass goodbye. Yeah. Oh. Get, get some syrup. You're going to be a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Um, so Marjorie is exhausted, right? Yes. Tell them why you're exhausted. I'm walking well, home because you didn't pick it was her a, up. It was the sex we had this weekend. <laughs> she just, you know, you know, why are you exhausted? Two high school friends that come in every year. We get theater tickets. We go to the theater mm. and we do something. We go out to brunch the next day. And this time, a, another high school person from New Jersey came up and met us on Sunday brunch. And the last person left this morning. And wow. I couldn't wait. It was enough. This was the woman that was on the on last week. No, yes, yes, on. yes. She was yes, on yes, from yes, Akron. Yes, yes. Yeah. Uh, and I adore her. She's really a great. And you know how some guests are a pain in the ass. And Paula, we're talking about you. Huh? What? Told Paula, we're talking about her. Oh, you mm -hmm. told Paula. Okay. Well, she should call us. Yeah, yeah. So you call them from but, you but it, 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 you know, some people come to stay and you go, OK, I got to do it. Their friend, they want need a place in New York to stay. Come on, stay. And then after they leave, Marjorie and I look at each other. Thank God they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> and and especially because they use the guest room, which I usually use as my room to watch television is in Marjorie is binge watching some show that has the word woman in it on Netflix. <laughs> and and I uh but uh when Paula comes, I just after she leaves, I say to Marjorie, you know, I, I'm gonna miss her. You know, she's just a really great house guest. Hmm. And you sit down, talk with her for hours at a time. You know, she's really wonderful. And uh we all went to the theater and we saw company, Stephen Sondheim's musical that this is a revival after 40, 50 years, is it? 50 years. 50 years since this thing was on Broadway last. And uh, we uh, we really enjoyed it. It was good. It was terrific. It know. was great. Yeah. Marjorie bought my ticket, and I have to thank her for that. Because mm. a Broadway ticket isn't, you know, it used to be, uh, oh, let me see. Let me get something for the mat. 52 bucks? Okay, here's 52 bucks. Tell them how much the ticket costs. It was a lot. Plus the fact we had talked about getting the tickets the week before he died. We had been talking about it for weeks, but the Friday before he died, we discussed it. Then he died. Then the tickets quadrupled. Yeah. <laughs> how much is a theater ticket these days, like in, on average? These I, tickets on first row mezzanine were in the 300s. I, and then you had a, added charges. You had charges for service charge, this fee, that fee. Have you ever, have you ever like, used those same day services that they have? Is that a scam out well, there? Well, that's TKTS. Yeah, they have the, the stuff where you could buy the tickets the day of if they yeah. have it. Mm. Yeah, and which is not a bad idea. Marjorie and I were sitting around the house. Let's see what, what tickets are available today. You have to we're go down in person, Alex. You have to go in person? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when we come into the city, that's one of the things we want to do is go to a show. Well, so, I've had people yeah. that have gone to the TKTS booth in, in Times Square. Yeah. We've gotten really great tickets for a show that day. You know, if you're ready to go that day, mm -hmm. yeah. you, you know, the tickets are available, you know, uh, and you can get some really good deals. 
Checky knows how to get good deals. Checky mm-hmm. sees every show on Broadway. And what he does is he, if he were here, he could tell you, I don't, I'm worried about him. I don't know where he is. Um, oh, well, I tried to call him yesterday and I didn't get an answer either. Okay. No. Maybe he did go. Yeah. Continue, yeah. Alex. Anyway, where, where were we? Where okay. were we? About uh-huh. tickets and tick- that day and getting great tickets. Oh, yeah. Uh, he always said to me, the best thing to do is get tickets for the week before the opening. Oh. He said, because you're not going to be, if you get tickets early, okay, before the show opens, of course, they're still working the show out and taking stuff out and putting stuff in. But the week before, that show is pretty well set in stone. Mm-hmm. So get a ticket the week before the show. He says he's gotten tickets the day before it opened, you know, and they're really cheap. And uh, the show's damn good. You know, I think with didn't we see some show that was in 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 uh, what do they call it? Uh, previews in previews uh, that uh, shuffle along or something, I think. And I, don't and, remember. And I said, why did this thing last three and a half hours? And we finally realized the reason was that we were watching a preview and they hadn't cut a lot of stuff out. Oh, yes, I remember. So if you're willing to kill your ass, go see something a couple of weeks before it opens and you'll see a four and a half hour show, you know. But anyway, it was a great show. Really good show. So we had a nice time. Thank you so much, dear. She paid for the tickets while she still had a job. So (laughs) that was. That was really nice of her. I appreciate it, you know. And uh, and uh, do they have any? Do they have any Broadway shows come to? Uh, w- you're in the Atlanta area, aren't you? In Georgia? Yeah, I'm about 25 miles north of Atlanta. Yeah. Do they? Uh, do they have? Um... There's yeah, like fo- the Fox Theater will have stuff, but mm-hmm. it ranges. It can be a comedian all the way to, you know, so do- to my. High school musical. Yeah. Oh, but do they bring do they bring Broadway shows there? I mean, the, the road companies. You know, it's mostly just you know musical acts or comedy acts. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, there's there's other theaters that have plays. Yeah, yeah. You know, well, you know they they the the they have the uh, uh, in San Francisco. We used to get a lot of the road. You know, the uh, what do they call them? Uh, traveling road shows, yeah, yeah traveling road shows, Tra- yeah. traveling road shows where they they come in with a cast and you know I saw the producers that way in San Francisco and it was horrid, it was mm. just horrid, mm. you know, because the people who were doing it was nobody I ever heard of and I didn't mm-hmm. care about and uh, you know so you usually we used to get things like uh, oh Phantom of the Opera with Bert Convy. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, our old friend Charlene is trying to get in here, and I'm, I'm I wonder what shall I admit her? What do you think, Charlie? Oh, I, if she can get in, she was having trouble before. Yeah, should we let her in? Yeah. <laughs> Let's give her another chance here. A provisional hall pass. Hmm. Yeah. Now she's connecting to audio. Okay, well, that's going forever. So anyway, oh, there's her face. There we go. Forehead. There we got oh, video. Okay, now, now we should be getting audio. No and music. she's wearing, uh, she's wearing, is that, no, that's not Joe Biden. Dark. Oh, is that another Charlene? Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, what Charlene is this? This is Charlene Solis. Hello, Charlene. Well, we've never had you here. I know. I know. I've been watching you. Mm-hmm. All the time, and I used to listen to you on Live 105. So obviously, the whole entire show. So obviously, you're in the Bay Area. Yes, I am. I'm Where in, Castro in the Valley? In Castro, Castro Valley. Valley. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm about uh, about 15 minutes from you in Livermore. Do me a favor. Oh, let's give right. this, let's give this a shot. Turn your phone sideways instead of what we call there. there that looks go. great. That's what's called landscape, and that works much <laughs> better for us. Obviously, I'm not very good at this. Yeah. Well, what what are you good at? What do you do for a living? Uh, Actually, I'm retired. Really? What's that yeah. like? <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty nice. Yeah. Well, Marjorie's yeah. Been, Marjorie's been forced into retirement. How's that? Going? How the, how's that going for you? 
Actually, I, I don't mind going down there in the morning. Really? Don't, yeah. I don't mind going where in the morning? To the office. I'm I'm glad I'm out of there. Oh, you're glad you're out of there. Oh, okay. yeah. all right. I just have to figure out something to do. It's yeah. A, well, uh, do you have any hints, uh, Charlene? I, I think well, the only thing I tell you that I do do is babysit my grandkids. So I don't, probably other people don't want to do that. Well, what they say is <laughs> start something new and then the other new things will come. So I'm going to go back to the gym this month. Oh, yeah. You keep saying that every month. <laughs> But this month, it's and she out. goes to a gym that costs her twenty five hundred dollars a year. Are you ready for that? Wow. You know, I have a gym gym down the street that I hardly ever go to, but it's fifteen bucks a month. You know, so if I don't go, which I know I wouldn't do, I used to go every day, believe it or not, for a while, uh, and then I I got all tired of it. Oh, here comes Paula. Here comes our friend Paula. Boy, we got a lot of babes today. <laughs> we got Mandy and we got Paula and we got Charlene and we got Mark. Hey, there she is. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. Mark, does your place have classes or is it just equipment? My gym? Yeah, yeah the classes. I take a lot of the See, that's the difference, there. Alex. See, like my studio charges like $80 a month. I mean, so I can see everybody. No classes? Yeah, just class. We don't even have equipment. Oh, oh, this is classes like a, and equipment, so I could do both. Right. Mm -hmm. See, that's yeah. what that to me. That's a that's still a decent price. It's great. Yeah. It's great. And I used to go every day up until COVID, so I got to just kind of roll yeah. into it. And they say once you make one change, then everything comes in. I'm exhausted listening to you two talking about working out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. <laughs> I don't, I don't go, I don't go to the gym, Alex. He comes to my house to cut the grass. <laughs> Jim Ortiz is his name happens to be Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I went every day when, uh, before, before I had my, uh, my, uh, my cancer stuff, I went every day. And then after that, I kind of stopped going there, but then we, his COVID hit. And I wasn't going to go to the gym. What get healthy at a place where it could kill me? You know, I mean, so I didn't go for the longest time. And you get out of that. Marjorie then went and bought a, uh, a what do you call it? A, a, a cycle. Peloton. Uh, how's that going for you, Marjorie? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. Is she it's, uh, indoor? Indoor Peloton, yeah. Oh, yeah. Here comes Vernon Nunn. Yeah. yeah one of those. Yeah. Uh, what, the Peloton? Yeah, it's yeah. indoor. Yeah, yeah. Indoor, it, and I also have an outdoor. Oh, really? Yeah, I use them both. That's my... I, I had a stationary bike once. It wasn't meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> but I just never used it. That was the problem. They always say measure the distance between the handlebars and the floor so you know how much distance when you hang up your shirts if they're going <laughs> to put the floor on you. I, I thought a stationary bike was where you, you had a bike where you stored your, your letters and correspondence <laughs> and other kinds of stationery. I, I, I thought Marjorie was going to say something like that's the way, you, that distance is how you can charge decide how long the penis I have to go do a kitchen. A, a person's penis is. I can't talk anymore. <laughs> Uh, where, where'd she say she had to go? To murder you. The kitchen. <laughs> wait, 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 did anybody hear her say she was leaving me? I'd say she had to do a kitchen thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, hello, Paula. Hi, sweetheart. Yeah, we so enjoyed having you here. Oh, I spent a great weekend in the Big Apple. Yeah. You know, I come back in Akron, Ohio, and man, there is nothing here <laughs> compared to. But I mean, she and I get into discussions and we talk for hours, right? You know, we did, we did very well. You know, we did very uh, well. We had, a, we had a big talk about uh, all the different t names for people's sexuality that they have listed today, and, <laughs> you know. I, I'm. I've decided to list myself as non-binary. I don't know why, but I hear it doesn't mean that doesn't mean you're necessarily gay. Okay, so if I say non-binary, I think that just means I don't want to say. 
Not so. that there's anything wrong with it. Yeah. What? <laughs> Not that there's anything wrong. With it. Not that there's anything wrong. With it. <laughs> I heard. I heard NRA members are now calling themselves amosexuals. Amosexuals. <laughs> That's real cute. I can do anything, but say, but but use the they pronoun for so one hard. person. I can't. It's 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 awkward, and I can't I can't get past it. Sometimes with everything else I'm cool with. I saw a name on on. Uh, I don't know, maybe it was a YouTube thing or whatever, in which it said the name of the person, and then it said he, him. Mm -hmm. yes. What's, what's the those, difference? Those are his pronouns. How could you Corporate not Corporate America, you, you see that on Teams and, and, and Zoom all the time. It says, you know, Len LaFrisco, he, him, or whatever. Yeah, we it, saw that this morning on something. What you want to be referred to as. It feels like an advertisement for the fact that you're liberal and accepting. I, 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 I mean, it doesn't, you know, I, I don't get it. Okay, you I, know. I have, to, I have to announce my pronouns? Mm -hmm. well, all right. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I do understand the, the, uh, the tough time that, that um, various uh, people are, are, are having, and I'm quite sympathetic with it, but um, the, uh, the, 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 the pronoun thing, I don't know what that is. Yeah, well, I would be he, him, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. If you say so, Alex. <laughs> yeah. It's up to you. Your choice. Yeah. If you're not sure, don't move to Florida. Well, we've just been <laughs> we've just been joined by Brian. Who knows what? Hey, Brian. We, Brian, what are your pronouns? I'm next to in my screen. I'm next to Mandy. So it's what's his name? What's her name? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see how it looks I was going to change it, then I was like, no, it's like I have to keep it now. <laughs> you, you, know, work too. The, you know what I did yesterday? Hold on a second. Let me just. Alex, tell us what you did yesterday. I'm not, no, I'm not going to now. Uh, Alex, no. you, you did something yesterday? <laughs> no, yesterday I, uh, I did uh, um, uh, a thing in the park, right? Yeah. One of my little walks in the park. I saw it. And then I see, yeah, I know I saw you were there, and and it, it said my uh, my uh, you know I, I, I just do a little talk for about what this one was about eighteen minutes or something, mm -hmm. and then as I'm sitting on a bench in the park, and then uh, I come home and after a day, I've got an enormous amount of people who watch the damn thing, you know. I got random face requests. You you got what? <laughs> Yeah. I got two random uh, face requests, friends oh requests. Friends requests on face them. Facebook? Yeah. Nobody you knew? No, and, and only one of them is friends with somebody you're friends with. But I and, usually do that with people that you're friends with, okay? Yeah. Uh, well, don't do that either because, because it just might be somebody who's then going to bother you like there's yeah. no tomorrow. I, mean, I got friends requests all the time, Alex. Huh? Don't you get friend requests all the time? Especially yeah, from people who I have. What What did you say, Vernon? Especially when you drop below 5,000, you get all these friend requests from all these hookers. Oh, yeah. I, it, what happens is <laughs> I have, I have 5,000 friends on my Facebook page. And the reason I do is when I was over at Sirius, I just kept talking about it, talking about it, talking about it, and eventually I got to 5,000. Well, when you get to 5,000, nobody else can join. They cut you off. Yeah, the minute you go under five thousand, every hooker in America yep. is trying to be your friend. <laughs> and I'm going, you know, while I appreciate that they find me attractive, uh, I I really don't want to have them as friends. So I just get rid of them, get rid of them, get rid of them. And I wrote Facebook once. I said, "Why are all these hookers trying to friend me?" You know. Yeah. And then and and my other. Huh? My other, the wife says, oh, these hookers are trying to get on your Facebook because you search for them. So they have all the analytics <laughs> oh, coming to you. Oh, oh, right. oh. That's not the reason why they're... No. Yes, they're, it is, Alex. You no, they're, <laughs> no, it's not. No. No, they're... they're, they're, they're they they really, search for hookers. And I don't know how they know it, but they know how to troll for, yeah. for guys. You know, and so they see that a guy has an available slot in his friends group or whatever, and they immediately ask to be friends. And if you say yes, next thing you know, she's going to be hitting you up for money. And do you yeah. want pictures of my panties and things like that? 
getting almost getting getting out from Lynn. We're almost getting a panty shot from Lynn. You wearing pants, Lynn? I hope so. <laughs> you're lying. You're lying. Everybody's wearing pants. No, I, I just want to say something really quick. I know we're all close with Mandy, yeah. and you know some of us are Facebook friends with her. And yeah. I just really like that she wants our approval on her her match.com pictures because yeah. you know we want to make sure no scumbags go to her. So she really previews us with them. So I really like that. So thanks, Mandy. We're looking thanks, out for you. We got your back. We got your back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. my uh, one of my coworkers came in today and he said, So have you gotten a lot of responses? And I said, <laughs> dude, it was a joke. I'm not putting this thing back on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, if, if, if that's a new picture, right, that you put up? Yes, I just. Yeah. For a moment, I thought, because I saw it on my iPhone, that your underpants were showing. <laughs> and then I realized I it, to, it was uh, kind of your hand. You're wearing shorts, but your hand was down there with some kind of cuff or something. And it looked yeah. like you were yeah. you had panties. You could see your pants. Then when I got it at home and, and looked got at it, here. I could here. see it. You know, when, when he blew it up really big for close examination, yeah, exactly. ruined his whole day. <laughs> no, well, I was gonna, I was gonna write her and say, "Do you know your panties are showing?" <laughs> you know. I get the microscope tonight. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't, man, because he was so enjoying it. No, it's a, it's a very attract, it's a, a very attractive picture. I just felt, what did she make a mistake here? You know, because people do that. Friends like always like bug me like we want to hear some stories you haven't been dating blah 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 <laughs> yeah well screw them you know <laughs> uh, yeah uh, 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 do they really bug you about dating because the show we just saw company is yeah. about a woman who everybody is uh, they're all coupled mm -hmm. and they're oh, all saying why aren't you married five. what and she's turning 35. And she's turning 35. And they say, I don't think it's about time you got married and about time you mm -hmm. got yourself somebody permanent in your life. And I think finally at the end, she decides it doesn't matter. You know, right. no big deal. Yeah. yeah. They just but, like to hear all the funny stuff, the funny anecdotes about the messages with people. You know, there's just. Well, I'd hate, I'd hate to be a woman. Because women get this whole pressure thrown on them about, well, you know, you're uh, you're at that point where. Uh, you know, the clock is ticking. Right. You know. If you want to find out, Alex, change your pronouns to she, she her. And <laughs> <laughs> what, did you what, were you, what were you saying, Mandy? I'm sorry, and I missed the joke. Well, who said, what did somebody just say? Just change your pronoun to he, her, to what? <laughs> he, her, and he'll find he, out. He, her, or something. No, they just, some people just say, oh, you know, why don't you have a boyfriend? You know, because it's been like three years since I got a divorce. So maybe that's a reason you don't have a boyfriend. Exactly. Yeah. You know, probably you, you learned your lesson. I mean, you yeah. you you have the, have the right to not I mean, have nice guys. I mean, you know, I have I've had some good experience, too. So, yeah. Yeah. But uh, this it's funny because this whole play is a, the musical is about that. Yeah. No. It's called company. Yeah. 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 She's turning five. She's living in New York and her world is caving in. Yeah. She's not married. Well, everybody's uh, urging her to. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's we trying should, to introduce her to people and, and so on. We should add that the original show, the, the, the odd person, odd meaning not part of a couple, was a guy. Yeah. And when the, the show was revived, they switched everything around. And uh, mm -hmm. I think it's better. I think it's a better show for it. It's, oh, I think I, I can't, you know, because this is the only way I've seen that show. I can't imagine it being played by a guy. Uh, you know, they changed the name from Bobby with a Y to Bobby with an I. And that was it. That was it. And mm -hmm. uh, but I think the plight of a woman in that situation is far worse than that of a guy. At 35, I mean, especially in those days. I mean, guys, isn't it kind of assumed that if you're 35 and you're a guy and you're still single? It's okay. Well, either that you're either gay or or that's okay. You know. Well, my brother-in-law is my age. He's 56 and he's never been married. Okay. But I only started dating somebody about five years ago. He met a, a young girl. I shouldn't say young girl. She's about 10 years younger than him mm -hmm. at the dry cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't speak English. 
very few words. That's very them. good because then very you, good. you never have to talk to her. Go ahead. Listen to her long, boring stories all night. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. But I think that a lot of, like, some of the family members thought <laughs> might be gay, mm-hmm. which to me was fine, but he was not. So he just, he was just setting his ways. He was very picky. He didn't, he just never desired to be married and have children or anything. So. Yeah. Wow. Oh, oh honey, you're 56. You look good. <laughs> good for you. Yeah, we're like the same age. I mean, but by the time he was in his 30s, people like the family was like, why aren't you, don't you have a girlfriend yet? And they bugged him a lot. Yeah. yeah. Uh, um, I went, what, before I married Marjorie, I think I went 15 years without getting married again. And my <laughs> whole, my whole attitude was why? You know, yeah. so is and by the way, I met Marjorie and we just enjoyed each other's company. And then one thing led to another, and she she kind of semi moved and she got she got went that time you went to the hospital, and I didn't <laughs> pick you. Well, <laughs> wasn't that the time that, that wasn't that the time when you went through a recovery and I said you can stay at my place? Yeah, but we were always. Well, always wait, but maybe I didn't pick you up, but I was willing to keep you at, have you stay at my place and the nurse. Yeah. You tossed, you tossed yeah. her the keys. And surgery and you have to leave the hospital. They won't let you leave without a. Person. All right, well, let's not get to that part of it. But I believe, I believe the reason we first started living together was you moved in because you had just gotten out of having an operation or whatever. And I, I offered my place for you to stay. And you came and really, you never left. So, so she was on the operating table and you toss her the keys? <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, I you can find your own way, but you can stay in my house. Hey, hey, <laughs> I, I would never do that because she was being operated on. I handed the keys to the doctor and said, when you're through. <laughs> Now that's a cool operator. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but wasn't that wasn't that the reason you started living with me is because you had had, had an operation and you needed yeah, a, a place to stay because you didn't want to yeah. be all by yourself. And I thought well, that was fine. That's a very romantic story. Yeah, well, and then she, then then uh, somehow she never left, and then all of a sudden we decided let's get a place together, mm-hmm. and that's how we got this place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, well, during that time, her I had girlfriend. Vern, what did you say? I said you referred to her as girlfriend for ten years on Sirius. You yeah, did. yeah, yeah. And I still I would be, you. you know, because it's it's an affectionate way of referring to her. You uh-huh. know, you know, I like her to think that she's my girlfriend. Yeah. So, but uh, uh, I don't know if you hadn't come along, I don't think I probably would have ever lived with somebody again, Marjorie. I, I just I, I I can't imagine who would have come along because I was doing the I was doing the online dating thing and that was pathetic. <laughs> that was just a pathetic way of looking for a date. But she was on J Date and she wrote me, and 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 uh, it turned that turned out okay. But every other thing that happened on J um, those dating apps was, it was just, the worst. Oh, did, did, I, did, did, did. Did you know who he was at all, Marjorie? Had you ever heard? No, of him? I never heard of Alex Bennett. I didn't know. Yeah. So yeah. it was just a guy. As most of the Western world is. I mean, <laughs> yes. they don't know who I am. Of the 4.5 billion people, there are at least 37 of them. Yeah, but I mean, uh, uh, you know, if you lived in San Francisco, you probably heard of me. If you lived in New York, you probably heard of me. But she lived in Philadelphia. Yeah. No, Western. I lived in New York. Yes. Well, not, not you. Were, Alex, I left. I left Philadelphia when I was seventeen. What time? Did, what year did you move to New York? Nineteen sixty-six, sixty-seven. Oh, really? And you didn't listen to me. Well, the hell with you. I didn't know you uh, existed. I want a divorce if you didn't listen to me. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, somebody posted on my Facebook feed something about KITS, and they were talking about. The, some of the DJs, whatever, and several of the comments were about you that they missed you, which I thought was interesting. I'll have to find it and tag you in it. <laughs> it's yeah. interesting. It's interesting that people. I mean, it's flattering that people miss me. But let's be honest. How long ago was that? I I went off the air there in 1997. Really? Yeah. 
Well, so I mean, I, I, 1997. I count, huh? I count myself as one of them. I, I always wondered what happened to you and then found you on Sirius and then here. But that's 20, what, 25 years ago? 25, yeah. yeah. You know. Uh, You'd be surprised how many people have I mentioned your name. They say, oh, yeah, he's listening to everyone. On the other hand, if I went back tomorrow on the air in the Bay Area, most of the people who would be available to me as an audience wouldn't even remember me or know who I was. Nobody's listening to terrestrial no. radio anymore. Right, right. You know, so uh, as I say, I used to be a big shot, you know. You can't be able to keep mentioning your name when they're talking about some songs. They say back in the Alex Bennett day. They mentioned your name again this morning. The guys on KMBR Sports Talk. They mentioned yeah. me? They mentioned you saying like the Alex Bennett time, like I'm um, on five. They're talking about some like music from back then, like Elvis Costello or something. So they, wow. they mentioned you before and then they, they just said it again this morning. Jeez. Huh. You know, usually when people will keep talking about you, it's not a good thing. Uh, these guys are young. I think they listened to you back then, too. Yeah. Well, it never translates itself into a job, so it really doesn't matter to me. I you know. know. Yeah, when, you say, when you say you're sick on there, on, on, on your Facebook, then there's like a thousand people that buy, and then nobody watches the shows. They say, oh, my God, I hope you're okay, and oh, we miss you. And then they never listen to the shows. Right, right. Charlene, you used to listen to me, right? Oh, turn on your microphone. Turn on your microphone. Turn, turn it on. Wow. I don't think I don't know how. Uh, well, oh yeah, we have a new Jeff. Yeah. Jeff's getting pretty good at this. We're going to have to quit kidding him about that. Okay. You know, Charlene, just hit the thing that we says where the microphone is. There you are. There you are. You got it? Yes. I'm sorry. So you used to listen to me in the mm -hmm. old days, right? Yeah, in fact, I worked from like six in the morning. That's when I started. Mm -hmm. And I listen to you every day, your whole show. Wow. Yeah. It yeah. Was, and, was, and, yeah. And so you, you, I guess the last time you probably heard me would be 1997. And as I say, mm -hmm. that's, I 20, that's 25 years ago. Yeah, and I still remember you and I still miss you. <laughs> See, isn't that wonderful? I just, uh, th thank you, Charlene. It You're welcome. Makes me want to cry. <laughs> <laughs> He wants to be 25 years younger. That's why he's crying. <laughs> yeah, well, Marjorie never had any kind of concept and still doesn't really the magnitude of how well known I was, say, in San Francisco. Yeah. I'm not bragging when I say this. I'm just saying she doesn't realize it. And so she's always kind of amazed when she sees this stuff and goes, mm -hmm. you know, boy, you, you did pretty well there, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and then she says, why can't you get a job now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You could go back to uh, Florida. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Your favorite place. Oh, man. Oh, I, I, there's nothing better than Florida. It's just <laughs> wonderful for old people and serial killers. <laughs> and, and Florida, man. And some old people who are serial killers. <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, Florida, boy. That Paul, you ever spent time in Florida? Um, oh, my parents had a condo in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Um, that was like for the prior generation. If you were Jewish, that was like uh, living out the American dream was to have a place in Flo Florida. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, it, it, it was kind of like, it, it, it did not move me. Yeah, it's not it, it, it. us yeah. either. Marjorie and I have never talked about moving to Florida. Never. You know, if she mentioned it to me, I'd divorce her. But, you know, <laughs> I mean, I, the worst year I the worst year I spent in Florida. Uh, 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 what was it? Uh, the worst uh, um, month I spent in Florida was three months in Florida. Yeah. What's that joke? The worst time I ever had in such and such. I think it's the other I spent way a, I spent a month there one day. Right. There, I there, spent there, a month there, there one day. <laughs> there are many jokes like that, implying, of course, that it's a long time to spend there. Yeah. Hey, Alex, can I tell you a good story? Sure. Uh, i doing this reno on the house I plan to die in someday and pulled the old water heater up the basement steps and got it out to the street and went to you, home. You took it up. You took the water heater up yourself? Yeah. Put it on a two wheel cart and you pull it up. It's only about a hundred and 
20, 140 pounds. Oh, great. You know, we yeah, had no, an air we're... conditioner that UPS didn't deliver to our door last week, and I thought I'd die bringing it up. Well, this is why you're going to like this story. So I went to Home Depot, and I'm talking to the guy trying to pick the one that I'm going to take home and install. And I mentioned to him that I pulled it up the stairs here, and these two 20-something gym rat-looking kids were standing there waiting to talk to the guy, too. And they said, there's no way in hell you pulled that thing up the stairs yourself. I said, why do you say that? Well, it took five of us to get it up the stairs. I said, five of you? How'd you do? Well, two of us with ropes and two on the bottom and one at the top pulling. And it took us almost 40 minutes to get up the stairs. I said, what the hell? How, how did, well, it turns out they didn't know you're supposed to drain it first. <laughs> 40, 40 gallons at eight, eight. You got 140 pounds. Uh, and what is it? Eight gallons, uh, eight, eight pounds a gallon. So they oh, had two, 320 pounds of water. And oh my God. <laughs> that's, that's and I re- so I turned to him and I said, you know, you're, you're going home with this thing. You're going to hook up a gas appliance and you didn't know to drain it. How about hiring somebody? You're going to yeah. blow your, you're going to blow yourself. Well, what'd you do? Put it on a hand cart and pull it up. Yeah. You pull it on a hand cart. You yeah. pop it up one step at a time. And- All right. Aren't there some high, uh, hang carts too, that have kind of things that will help it go up steps. Yeah, mm-hmm. not mine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But but then when I went to put it back in the base, when I had my wife come over just to be there, it's going down. If something happened, <laughs> to I watch wouldn't have anyone to call I wouldn't have anyone to call 911. But here's <laughs> what I here's what I don't get and what makes absolutely no sense to me is that uh we got two packages last week, both from UPS, an air conditioner, 1200 BTU, 12,000 BTU air conditioner well that's it's fairly heavy it's quite heavy though uh got that he left it downstairs then the other day marjorie or order bought some carpet at 12 uh, by 17 12 by 17 carpet at uh at macy's they pack it up put it in a big square box and um ups really? delivers it but don't deliver it to the door. Apollo was with us when we lugged the damn thing upstairs. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to write them and tell them that I'm 82 years old and I have cancer. Okay. You're on the eighth floor. <laughs> and I'm on the eighth floor. The least and you're you could not going to last too long. Is, yeah, is get <laughs> into an elevator and at least leave it at my front door. <laughs> In both cases, these were really heavy items. Now, Marjorie said she has some lighter su- items, oh, a, a lighter rug that we ordered, kind of a hall rug, and it was light, you know. Right to the front door. I'm surprised somebody didn't nab it. <laughs> that happens. That, I that's bet. Well, I, I don't bet. know that you could nab the, these, the, the, these two the boxes. Truck and it's too easy. I saw a free air conditioner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, a hand truck, it's pretty easy to move stuff. Didn't but. somebody in one of the apartments get a hold of a picture that was taken by the camera? Our neighbor has posted mm. some pictures. We're, we're four buildings connected by a uh, court. Yeah. Mm. And the picture of two people taking things out. Uh, really? One was holding the door and one was getting stuff. Jeez. It's yeah. an alert to yeah. all the tenants. It was, it was amazing. But it's amazing they didn't, in both cases, these two incredibly heavy, heavy items. You know, I could barely get it into the elevator. Uh, maybe one of you younger guys like Jeff could have done a better job. Of <laughs> but you get yourself a little dolly to put. Or I'll call Charlene and she can fly out and bring the, <laughs> help right. me bring the air conditioner up. It's just why they do that. I have no idea. You know, I mean, I thought I thought that UPS. When you sent something through UPS, they delivered it to somebody's door, not My to their. Is, how did you get the air conditioner in the window after you got it upstairs? Well, we then called our uh, our super. super, paid him a th- hundred dollars mm-hmm. uh, because I always pay him. I don't, and he installed the thing for us. Uh. You know, uh, brought his assistant up, and they hauled it up and put it in the window, and did a very good job of it. You know, he tilted it just right so that the water will drip out of it and so on and so forth so he knew what he was doing i i would if i had to do i couldn't do that i just couldn't do it i would have to have somebody else help me and even if that we'd probably put the air conditioner in there and then it would fly out the window to the pavement below so <laughs> yeah oh, nice. it was uh, 
I always have him do the air conditioners. Uh, I, I, actually, every winter you should pull the air conditioners out of your window. They say, but oh, I, huh? you can put a you put a cover on it. A cover on it? Why? Not eight stories up. There's yeah. covers to keep the the snow from the snowpack from getting into the condense into the. No, New York doesn't get stuff. snow anymore, so it's yeah. We last year, well, how much snow did we see this year? Nothing. Nothing. You know, I was planning on going skiing down Malcolm X Boulevard. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Nothing. I'll yeah. lend you my skis. <laughs> and Paula came. She came for great weather. I mean, it was like spring here finally. Perfect. 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 Just perfect. Uh, and uh, beautiful. It's a beautiful day out there today, too. But I didn't go out because I had this to do. And uh, we were also watching... We were watching the Queen's Jubilee show, the, the concert fail. That was acting up and Kate was having to tell him to stop acting up. And he was like, <laughs> did you see oh, that? Oh, really? I didn't even gotten to that part. Oh, it's so hilarious. It's gone this, this is where they have all the music Prince numbers, Louis. right? Is, is, this huh? where they, is this where they have all the musical numbers? Yeah. And so and all the performers. obviously cameras caught the youngest of... Um, Kate. I don't like that little kid. Louis? I don't, I don't like him at all. The girl, he's, Charlotte, is fine, but he's he's a brat. He Well, apparently, because, I mean, he was being a little. Mm, he's and he's the one that's got to become king. She's the one that can go out and become a cheap slut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's like 15th in line. Who knows? He's the youngest. He's he, little. No, he's, he's he, right after uh, Charles, who should probably just not even take it. But oh, you're talking about William? You don't yeah. like William? William. So he's, he's the king after William. Yeah. Yeah. Little, no. What about George? George is after William Allen. George is the oldest. And oh, George. Sure. That's what I'm talking about. George, I thought, was a real brat. No, well, he might be, but this is, he's like Louis, their little one, who's four. Yeah. And he yeah. was acting up uh -huh. and he was doing this and he tried to cover her mouth. Like when she was talking to him, he tried to. Oh, I, I, I didn't even notice him there. The, there's the kid all kind of dressed up in a suit and that's mm -hmm. the oldest one, right? Mm -hmm. That's a pretender to the throne. I don't like him. I yeah. immediately don't like him. <laughs> I will be long dead after when he finally becomes king. And I still won't like him. <laughs> you know. I just thought it was funny because it was very, you know, just like, you know, the modern mom having to deal with her bratty kid at a public event. And just knowing that the whole world is seeing this, it's got to just be so nerve wracking. You know what I love is the idea about, you know, the child order, you know, and, and what they, that there's a certain way that each one of them turn out. Mm -hmm. like Marjorie was the youngest. Right, Marjorie? I was the baby. You were the yeah. baby. See? And she will always be the baby. Mm -hmm. And she gets treated a certain way. But it's something like the middle act, I call them. The middle child mm -hmm. uh, it has the most problems. He, gets, really? he or she gets all the hand-me-downs, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but in the case of the, uh, of, of the royal family, I, I don't really... Uh, think harry made a bad decision i know why he feels that way he doesn't need it you know yeah. he's not never going to become king he's like eighth in line or something now because they yeah. keep putting out all these new brats you know <laughs> and and um he, he he doesn't have to live by those rules and i think he wanted to get out from under them and he didn't like the fact that there were certain members of his family that were outright racists yeah who kept saying, well, what's the child going to look like? Yeah. yeah. So bad. Yeah. Yeah. That was a terrible thing they did. Uh, I, and I bet who did, I was saying, telling Marjorie, I don't think it was Charles that said that. I yeah. think that was William. Probably. Really? Yeah. Yeah. I don't th I think Charles. It, it, well, Charles is more of a, of a father in this situation is the father in the situation. And I think he was just happy his son found somebody he loved, you know, because it, he'd been going the longest time being a, being a, a bachelor. So and I, also because I, well, look what, what he went through. He was forced to marry somebody he didn't really want to. Yes, exactly. He good, wasn't a good point. Uh, yeah. 
And so he probably sympathizes with that. Yeah. But I think William was the one. I think William's got the attitude. You know, I'm going to be. Well, they apparently don't talk. You know, that's the thing. And so you think he must have done something to piss Harry off. Because they they don't talk. Or Harry did something to piss him off. But for whatever reason, they were very close at one point. Right. Right. When he married Megan, that's when it all started. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, you know, I, I like her. I think she's okay. Mm-hmm. Shecky doesn't. When I talk to Shecky, uh, he, if he were here today, he he doesn't like Megan that much. I don't he, see what's. You think she's a? What's wrong with Megan? I know. He he has a feeling she's he's kind of she's kind of a uh, gold digger. You know, I don't think so. Who would want that life? I'm just that's yeah. the thing I go. Yeah, if you're a gold digger, you could find an easier way yeah. to be a gold digger. <laughs> and it like night, you could marry Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Night she snores really loud too. Yeah. <laughs> How about that Johnny Depp trial? Man, I just love the way that thing turned out. Uh I uh I my feeling on it was the whole thing was trivial. It was really trivial. And I guess it's one of the reasons we watched it. We have so much heavy news out there to watch this thing with two people arguing, you know, he he hit me and no she 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 pooped on the bed. She, she pooped <laughs> on the bed. Yeah. yeah, we loved all this, and it was all trivial. And then when it finally a verdict came through, I said, "You know what was trivial is now profound. That it was it was a profound verdict that really kind of I think was right in this particular case. And I'm sick and tired of guys always having to be called the the you know women being called the victim and guys being called the aggressors." In this case, it was nice to see that that wasn't a given. Right. Okay. So, so we had a long conversation about this, and you were unconvinced about anything I said. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, be, be, because it, 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 your your reaction is, I think, one sided. It's it. Uh, um, I think the pendulum just is swinging a little bit, but, but. I, I, you felt that the pendulum was swinging a little bit, and I felt that it was a big pendulum swing. I, see, this is what we were arguing. This is how, this is why she's such a good guest. If that's what you're going to argue over, where oh, the absolutely. pendulum is, and we yeah, agreed absolutely. the pendulum had shifted, right? <laughs> was just, how far did it shift? Yeah, well. I'm not so sure that that he was victimized. Um, um, that, the the, the the sympathies are now on the other I, side I, again, I, and they've yeah. been on this on the other side for like a thousand years. Yeah, well, they just uh, they just uh, it's it's been uh, in the news that she has been removed from the next Aquaman movie. They're going to kill off the character Yay. in the first reel, uh, and he's being offered all kinds of opportunities. Uh, but but for a while he wasn't because he was known as a wife beater. Because of her implications of that. Well, and that's, not, simply, that's not right either. I would agree with yeah, that. Yeah, well, just nice that that was set right in an atmosphere where it's hard to set that right. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't you think that they both were were ridiculous and, and, and violent with oh, each listen, other? Oh, listen, I think they had a marriage that they <laughs> loved every moment of it because it was yeah. combative. You know, yeah. you've known couples like that. Yeah. You go, why Why are these people married? They argue all the time. They're yelling and screaming at each other all the time. Yeah. Well, and, and why are they together? And the answer is there's something there that is worthwhile in that relationship. And it's probably the fighting. And that's what the, 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 the show company is all about. Yeah. That was, you know, that's what made it so good. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, but. Uh, and that she was 35 and not married. Yeah, these are the kind of discussions Paula and I were having. That's why I love we it. Had, we had fun. Well, we had fun. No, you know, she, Marjorie has a lot of friends, and I like them and so on and so forth. But you're the only one I can sit down and talk with. <laughs> you know, and I look forward to it. You know? Me too. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and I didn't even know that you were famous. Uh, well, I, I didn't even know that. If you had, you would have been, you've been mar- much more impressed by me. Anyway, <laughs> uh, it's wonderful to be a has-been, I'll tell you. 
<laughs> well, somebody said, how does it feel to be a has-been? Somebody was really nasty to me one day. Said, how does it feel to be a has-been? I said, it's better than like you being a never was. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that is the alternative to has been that's true well i'm really uh sorry shucky isn't here today and i don't know where he is i'm worried about him now next now week you make me worry huh now you're gonna make me worry too yeah well I didn't he say me. didn't he say that he was going to prague didn't no he but no but, but he called that. me uh the day he was supposed to go and said i've decided not to go oh so, because he had insurance on the trip anyway, so he could just claim anything he wanted to. Uh, huh. And uh, he he was he, but he didn't want to he he didn't want to go. And he said, "I'm not going." So I said, "I'll call you later in the week." So I called him yesterday, and there was no answer. And then huh. I called him today on the show here because he hadn't called here, mm -hmm. and he he didn't call either. And I'm either worried that something's wrong, or maybe he just went. Yeah. He probably uncancelled. He could have could have been he uncancelled. That's right. You, if you hear from him, would you mind posting that he's all right? Yeah, let us know he's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. It, it's funny that these people here, Charlene. You'll have to keep calling us again. You can become part of the group. Okay. Uh, th these are people that worry about each other. Actually, <laughs> you know, that's why I told everybody. You know that uh, uh, Steve Berger is. Uh, you know, the reason he's not here is because he had some issues. He kept writing me there was just something with his daughter, but he didn't want to talk about it. He said it was the worst day of his life. And wow. I'm, I'm thinking that there was something right. that was, you know, had to do with uh, with health. Uh, and uh, But he wrote me and said, my daughter is better, and I'm feeling better, but I don't feel well enough to call today. And I, he said, I don't want to call still being in this mood, as he put it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I just want you to know that he's okay. You know, so anyway, hey, listen, we got to go. We're running over here. Uh, what's her name, Mandy? Mandy, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us from Georgia, by the way. Uh, you had some elections down there. Oh, God, I didn't even vote, y'all. I'm so, I'm just bleh. I just, yeah. Um, uh, I know that. Oh. Uh, who got nominated for, uh, well, Marjorie Taylor Greene got re-nominated uh, re for. Don't get me started. Herschel Walker is going to go. Walker. Herschel Walker. He's a moron, <laughs> isn't he? <laughs> He's an absolute moron. When does that stop anything? He's got brain damage from the NFL. Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. But he's got name NFL. recognition. Get it. He's got yeah. that. That's what it is. Dr. Oz, for instance, in Philadelphia, oh, oh you know, God. it's name recognition. Name the fact that he, yeah. was, you know, he was popularity contest. It's ridiculous. The fact that he was pushing <laughs> fake medicine all the time was amazing. You know, right. he we gotta uh, get the my pillow guy on, on the ballot somewhere. Yeah. 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 Herschel Walker beat out some uh, guy that's been like a a Georgia candidate, like he was the secretary of the agriculture. Yeah, but on the know, a good guy, good Republican, nice, not crazy. And he'd be wow. happy. On the Democratic side, didn't who who got nominated for uh, governor? Uh, oh, Stacey yeah. Abrams. Stacey Abrams. Yay. Yeah. That's, Yay. That's, that's good. Well, it's a bunch of liberals here, so it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, mm. we're, it's not like we're making a political yeah. statement on our no. usually non political show. But anyway, uh, uh, nice to see things happening in Georgia. And uh, let me I'll get to you in a second. Right. Jeff Stein, thank you so much. Always appreciate it. Len cool. Uh You're always there, even on the things I do out in the park. I see your name come up, Len Lafrisco. So. Uh, you know, I love hearing what you're up to. <laughs> thank you. That's very mm -hmm. nice of you. Marjorie Miller, on the other hand, doesn't care what I'm up to. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I should ask her what I always ask her this time of day. What's for dinner? <laughs> oh, what kind of wife are you? Uh, Andrew, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Paula, you know we love you, you know? Yeah. And if you came every other weekend, I'd be happy. Okay. Aww. Careful. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> it's a nice room. The bed feels good, right? You know, you got TV set in there. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And by the way, I got PBS working finally. <laughs> Vernon Nunn, thank you so much. Always love hearing from you. And of course, uh, what's his name? Brian. 
uh, and he's at work, I think, aren't you? Or where are you today? Yeah, I'm in my white my white room. You're in your white room in the office, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because we don't see Adrian sticking her head in yeah. there every five seconds and doing a hoochie coochie dance. Hey, how, much, how, much hoochie those, coochie. how much did those teeth cost you, Brian? Yeah. <laughs> uh i got out my you know when you're only six years old you know 20 bucks is a lot of money so it's good 20 yeah. bucks geez. <laughs> what was this what was the question he didn't lost two or teeth yesterday two of her first teeth yesterday so oh Ooh, um, Adrian? Had to come last night this how morning. much how much your teeth going for now i gave her 20 dollars. that's a lot of money for her Wow. Yeah, they were a quarter when I, when I was a kid. I was like a quarter. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I'll get $20 back and I'll spend something $5 for her. So you realize so. when she loses all 32 teeth. <laughs> <laughs> is she a shark? I take out a loan. What I do is I take out a loan now. Uh, yeah. But anyway, uh, 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 Charlie Wallace, thank you so much. And Charlene, please, now that you know we do this on Mondays, Call us. We love hearing. Okay. From you. Okay. Thank you. More women. Uh, more women today. More women. Yeah. Yeah. Three percent. It's getting good. I guess we can't be the He-Man Wood Imitators Club anymore, huh? No. Yeah. No, you can't. Mm. Oh wait a minute. Four, yeah, four women. Yep. And uh, of course, we always have Charlie Wallace sign us off by saying, oh, "Him and Edward." Yeah. That's all, folks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the official cartoon voice. Um, That's right. The, of the pop up. Program. Anyway, <laughs> everybody give a big wave goodbye. Goodbye from me, too. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right.